the, the training to get to where I am now. It, it's, it's, an, a, um, it's a commitment of time, uh, and more and more it's a commitment of money. So after undergraduate, it is four years of medical school. Uh, for me, it was then three years of internal medicine residency because you can't become a cardiologist without becoming an internist. And then four years of cardiology training, which involved both research training as well as uh, clinical training. So all in all, after college, it was a, a total of 11 years of uh, training. Um, the interesting thing is, is my background is actually liberal arts in college. So I knew I was going to go into sciences for the rest of my life, so I said, I think I'll get a liberal arts degree and, and go study poetry and, and language and, and, uh, and literature, uh, and I'll catch up on everything a little bit later. Wasn't necessarily good at those things, but, uh, but at least I had my opportunity to do it. I ran um, cardiology fellowship training for, for nine years here, and one of the things that we always look for is we're not just looking for people who are smart, but we're looking for people who um, are engaged, uh, people who can communicate well with patients, uh, people who are uh, well-rounded, um, and those aren't necessarily the, the complete science geeks. And so, w you know, having a little bit of liberal arts background, uh, you know, enables you to be able to communicate a little bit better, allows you to kind of think a little bit more about um, um, things such as, uh, you know, socioeconomic uh, um, impacts on the practice of medicine and, and understanding where your patients are coming from. So I, I think, you know, it all boils down to you're still taking care of patients and, you know, having a, a good concept of humanities. Remember, humanities is, is, has humans in the, uh, in the title. Uh, and essentially, you know, understanding humans is, is our job. And it's not just about understanding biology and, uh, and technology, but it's understanding the person as well. My rec strong recommendation is be bold. Um, you know, if you want, if there's something that you want to do, it is, it is always possible. It's just how, how much you want to pursue that, that, um, that action. Um, you know, if you want to be an engineer, for example, who does a lot of biomedical applications, go out and find your, your, your physician champion, your biologist, your geneticist, whatever, whoever you need to work with, or vice versa. Um, always be bold and, and you know, don't be afraid of, of being the first to do something. Um, a good example of that, so my, you know, one of the things I'm known for is I invented a, a new technology. It's called ultrasound molecular imaging. Um, my ability to do that meant that when I was training how to do cardiovascular imaging, I had to go off and learn vascular biology, chemical engineering, uh, and other uh, uh, techniques that aren't necessarily related. And what it did was it gave me a very specific, interesting niche a position to be able to create this new technology and solve problems that hadn't been solved before. And it's all because I was bold enough to say, just because somebody else hasn't done it doesn't mean that I can't do it.